I want us to think together about images. Images of American Indians. You know, the feathers, the braids, the beads, the buckskin. Indian warrior, Indian chief. Fast as an Indian, strong as an Indian, brave as an Indian. Indian princess, Indian squaw, Indian giver. All of these images and meanings form like wallpaper on the insides of our minds. They're ever-present and yet invisible. These are our Americana Indians, the imaginative, romantic, fictional portrayals of the real Native nations of our country. Now, why do I care about this issue? I care because I'm American Indian. My tribe, the Chiricahua Apaches, recognize all of southern Arizona and New Mexico as our homelands. We are known by our tribal leaders, Geronimo, Cochise, Naichi, Lozen. You know, the angry ones, (laughs) the fighting ones. More wallpaper, more imaginative than real. Now, you may be thinking, but... She doesn't look Indian. Where are her braids and her buckskin? See? There's the wallpaper, the ever-present expectation of Indianness from the Western movies and the storybooks. These fictions create confusion when they meet reality. These fictions can also cause harm when they replace reality. Today, there are 4.1 million American Indians in this country, and many of them, like me, are urban. In fact, New York City has 100,000 American Indian people, while here in Albuquerque, there are 33,000 American Indians. Now, we don't all look or act or behave or believe in the same things. In fact, there's not just one way to look or act or to be Indian. We are as diverse as the 562 sovereign nations. Now, I'm a college professor, and I've observed that youth culture feels very comfortable appropriating American Indian images and dress at Halloween, during games with sports mascots, at hipster concerts. Now, maybe this is just innocent. They're just playing. But if so, why is it that we've stopped dressing as Aunt Jemima and the Frito Bandito, but we continue to dress as American Indian people? And what is it about the sexy Indian squaw that seems ever present in the American imagination? Now, I decided to do some serious research on the topic, so I did an internet search. And you may want to try this at break, but I typed in the words Hispanic girl. And this is what I got. Beautiful young girls and women, they're going to school, they've got careers, they've got dreams. Then I typed African American girl. And I got much the same. Young girls and women look at the camera lens with complete self-confidence. Then I typed in American Indian girl, and this is what I got. The sexy Indian squaw, the flowing hair, the nudity. This is our situation. American Indian women are the most victimized group in the country. American Indian women have the highest rates of sexual and physical abuse. In fact, One in three Native women will be raped during her lifetime. For many, the question is not if, but when the abuse will occur. Now, if we go back to our slide of American Indian girls, that ratio for demeaning images is exactly the same. It's one in three. Now, it's very difficult to draw a direct cause and effect between media images and harm to Native communities. But when we look at 
these outfits and the titles like tribal treat and sexy tribal trouble, it becomes clear that the sexualization of Native American women is a given. The sales line, all this fringe was made for shaking, takes on new meaning in light of sexual abuse. While the consumer may be thinking exoticism and allure, I am thinking bruises, blood, and trauma. <coughs> Images may seem harmless, but they must be interpreted in light of social and historical context. The United States government has long waged a war on Native women's bodies, including rape in military action, boarding school abuse, forced sterilization. These demeaning images and attitudes are learned. The wild Indian has resonance across time. We may think that these behaviors and actions are no longer present, but they are. Fall 2012 saw the designer Paul Frank, the band No Doubt, and Victoria's Secrets all launch ad campaigns using the feathered headdress, an item that is sacred to Native peoples. Native advocates and their allies were swift in their protest, and all three companies later withdrew their ads with an apology. But the damage was largely done. Internet hate and intolerance replaced what could have been a considered conversation about Native peoples and their culture and history. We can do better. Demeaning images and attitudes are learned. Parents, take note. If Indian-themed birthday parties are OK for your kids, when they grow up, they're going to go to parties and dress as Indians. If your school sponsors events where they ask students to dress in paper feathers, paper bag feathers, then these kids are going to go to college and they're going to dress in paper bag feathers. If it's OK to play cowboys and Indians when they're young, when they grow up as adults, they're going to play cowboys and Indians. Let me be clear. This is offensive to the dignity of Native peoples, but it is also shameful for those who lack the common sense to think twice. Ladies, don't go here. <laughs> this is not an attractive look. <laughs> friends, don't let friends look stupid dressing <laughs> as Indians. The United Negro College Fund had a very successful ad campaign, and it was called, A Mind is a Terrible Thing to Waste. The American Indian College Fund's ad campaign is Think Indian. What I want you to do is more than think Indian. I want you to consider the Native perspective. Then I want you to think about your own assumed wisdoms, and I want you to have a conversation. Parents, think about your kids' future. Teach them to respect difference. Young people, if you have a friend who comes to a party in a headdress, ask them, what are you thinking? Consumers, choose not to buy derogatory products. Buy Native products from Native people. What I'm asking for is simple. Think twice. Speak out. Educate yourselves. Have a conversation. And when you next meet this Native woman at your dinner table, think Indian and consider this Native journalist who has more to offer than just a stick of butter. Thank you.